Ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, let's get it started here. Please remain standing for the posting of the colors by the Langley Air Force Base Honor Guard. Good evening. On behalf of all the faculty and staff, Dr. Olson and myself, welcome to your 2018 college graduates. At this time, please join me in an expression of gratitude in your own way, according to your own individual beliefs, so that we can recognize these remarkable people who are about to embark on the next chapter of their life. We join together to celebrate and give thanks for every graduate here today. Each unique individual started this program with unlimited potential. We would like to give thanks for leading them in their desire to learn, for keeping them safe as they studied, and for watching over them during their finals. We hope that each graduate here feels proud and enjoys sharing this moment and this achievement with their family and friends that are here tonight and those who have supported them throughout their journey. May today be the first of many good memories that burns bright within you as you embark on the next chapter of your life. Please be seated. Now to introduce our first student speaker, 
Mr. Tony Rufi, Campus Director of Academic Affairs for ECPI. Good evening, I'm Tony Rufi, Campus Director of Academic Affairs. It's my pleasure to introduce to you our graduate speaker. I'm really excited about doing this. I do this every year, and it just gets better every year, okay? As an Army wife of 18 years, mother of three children, veteran of multiple deployments, an experienced cross-continent mover, our graduate speaker brought an interesting perspective to all of her classes. Not only did she graduate with honors, but served as the president of the Cyber Network Security Club and actively participated in the Student Leadership Association. As she likes to say, she's waited a long time to go back to school for something she really enjoyed, and it paid off as she's currently working in the IT field at Fort Houston. Ladies and gentlemen, Silky Maxey. Good evening. I'm so excited to be here tonight. I'm gonna to do my best to make this quick and painless for all of us, me included. <laughs> I'd like to start by saying thank you to all of you for being here tonight and sharing this moment with us. Ms. Larar, Dr. Olson, Mr. Rufi, esteemed faculty and staff, distinguished guests, you all helped us reach this goal of ours starting with Dr. Olson and Mr. Rufi regularly asking us, what can we do to better help you? You did not just ask questions. We got to see what we asked for established. It showed that you care and it mattered. You answered countless questions with such kindness, about a half, half a million of them in my case, all of them networking related or our cool lab See the network and cybersecurity students, we got our own dedicated space with all the equipment our hearts could desire. I learned so much being able to put my hands on the real thing. Thank you for making it possible. Faculty and staff, all of you went above and beyond to help us when life threw us curveballs, which it did. Thank you for caring to see us succeed. When I first began this journey, all I knew was that I really, really wanted to work in a field that I would enjoy and that I wanted to be one of the best in it. But I was also worried I would fail. See, my cons list was much longer than my pros. High school, lay back 20 years. English is a second, well, technically third language for me. And um, that was enough to intimidate me, all right. And then I'm also an army wife and mother of three boys. Hi, guys. Many of you know that um, being married to the military means your spouse can be called away at any time. This was the factor that worried me most. And that's exactly what happened. My husband has been gone for almost two years now. And though I had his full support, I had to take care of our sons myself with no family nearby and that as best as I could, still trying to learn as much as I could. But I had support nonetheless. My mom, for example, always encouraged and supported me, whether it meant crossing continents to come help me when she could, or simply encouraging me when she couldn't. My brother and sister, family and friends overseas, they've all been telling me how they are beaming with pride, <laughs> and they are watching this event online tonight even though it's well past midnight where they are. Please allow me a, thank, uh, a second to thank them. Liebe Mama, Hansi, Anja, meine, meine liebe Familie und Freunde, ich danke euch für eure Unterstützung, eure Liebe. Und ich freue mich, dass ihr dabei sein könnt. Um, ich sehe euch dann später. <laughs> thank you for that. Um, to my family and friends who are watching from here in the U.S., Thank you for encouraging and supporting me. I love y'all. I have family rooting for me in two continents. <laughs> to my husband, I actually don't know if he's watching since he's in the middle of a move. But if you are, thank you. You made this possible. I still can't believe you're missing this by two days. <laughs> 
And finally, I would like to thank my sons. That wasn't supposed to happen. <laughs> Joel, Christopher, Kobe, thank you for helping me and for being patient. Sorry. I know it was hard being alone here without dad. And I was always so busy with homework. You guys are as brave as they come. Thank you. And I see that we have major support here in the house tonight. Mothers and fathers, husbands and wives, sons and daughters, beloved family and friends. You stood by this class and supported them. Whether it meant you paid a bill, watched the kiddos, or simply encouraged us. Many of us here needed you, and you came through. What do you say? Let's show them we appreciate them. Thank you so much. My fellow recipients, we did it. We went through intense course schedules, interned, volunteered, and handled our business a lot faster than most university students do. Mm. <laughs> and for many of you, handling your business meant being a parent, holding down one or two jobs, and still taking care of your children while still succeeding in your classes. It has been a pleasure to share this journey with you. Some classes were a breeze, others had us moaning and stressing, huh? <laughs> but we figured it out together. You have shown me such kindness, and I hope that I've been the same for you. Many of you had doubts, just like me, when you started, but the, despite those fears, we tried anyway. I rejoice and celebrate this moment with you. We did it. But before I go, I'd like to leave you with two quotes. They go hand in hand and will serve you well in both your personal life as well as your career. One says, you must be the change you wish to see in the world. You might say, how do I do that? That there is a little ambitious. I'm only one person. I can't possibly change the world. That's where the second quote comes in. It says, treat others how you want to be treated. Yeah, see, we need to get rid of the uh, get them before they get me attitude. That's how we currently operate, and we see where it is taking us. So try to treat others as you want to be treated. Assuming you want to be treated with respect, give it. Kindness, be kind. Patience, be patient. If you don't want to be gossiped about, hey, zip it. You get the idea. It's a simple concept, but it works. Imagine what the world could be like if people treat others how they want to be treated. The quotes were by Gandhi and Jesus. Both changed the world, but it started with one. I pray that we all have the courage to live as a people of honor and integrity, despite the fact that others may not. There is room for improvement. Let's do our part. Congratulations, graduates. Thank you. Good evening, I'm Alicia Coles, Campus Director of Academic Affairs. It is my great pleasure to introduce to you our guest speaker for Medical Careers Institute School College of Health Science. A military wife of five years, mother of one daughter, a Michigan native, this honors graduate enjoys spending time with her family. She would love to travel the world and being a military spouse will most likely than not get that done. She, plans to continue, she also plans to continue to further her education. An avid hunter, so much so that she named her daughter Hunter. Ladies and gentlemen, Rachel Owens is our medical assisting graduate. Good evening, fellow graduates, faculty, friends, and family. It is quite an honor to be standing in front of all of you here today. To be honest, 
I always pictured myself graduating from college. I just never imagined I'd be standing up here. <sighs> Sorry. <laughs> In high school, I skated by with mostly A's and B's, sometimes a C or a D, but I was just your average girl. After graduating high school, I went right into a community college but shortly after beginning, I got married and moved to Georgia because my husband is in the Navy. So I took a break from school to work at a nursing home. And after about two years, I had finally gained the courage to go back. So I took a few more classes, still unsure of what I wanted to do with my life. But then life changed. I got pregnant and we moved again, only this time to Virginia. After moving here, I gave every excuse in the book why I wasn't going back to school. Whether it be, I wanna wait for the baby to get here, or we just can't afford daycare right now. I kept putting it off. And so my journey began. Like most of us graduating today, my experience began with, with a basic internet search, trying to find something to better myself, along with filling out a quick form, followed by submitting this information at some point, I wanted to better myself, but I was still unsure of going back to school. But it only took about 10 to 15 minutes before the school was calling me. <laughs> I guess I kind of like that go-getter attitude because, well, here I am standing in front of all of you today. Now, I honestly had no clue what to say up here. So after rewriting the speech about three times and asking my mentors for advice, they basically all said the same thing. Talk about myself and how my journey became. Although I respectfully disagreed with them, because today isn't just about me. It's about all of us. We're all here because we all seen potential in ourselves to make a better life for not only ourselves, but for our families. We've spent countless nights and weekends away from our families, finishing up papers or studying for an exam. Some of us have literally put our blood, sweat, and tears into our programs. And I guarantee at some point, we all felt like giving up. But here's to us, because we didn't. We decided that we wanted to be more, that we wanted to succeed and to live a better life. And here we are. Bradley Whitford once said, take action. Every story you've ever connected with, every leader you've ever admired, every punny little thing that you've ever accomplished is the result of taking action. You have a choice. You can either be a passive victim of circumstances or you can be an active hero of your own life. I'm here to tell you, I'm not just trying to be my own hero. I'm trying to be my husband's, my daughter's, and anybody that ever has and ever will look up to me. From my peers, I've learned that everyone has a different story, a reason they showed up, and when they really wanted to be at home or making money. But we all had one thing in common. We all did it for somebody. Which leads me to the last thing I want to say, because it's probably the most important thing that I will say, and that is thank you. To our peers who became the, sorry, to our peers, the people who we became good friends with today, to the staff for investing their time and knowledge into helping us become the people we are today, and to our friends and families, because they are the ones who support us, they support our dreams, the ones we look to for inspiration when we fail to find it ourselves, and the ones that we made sacrifices for, trying to get to where we are today. So take a moment, look around, and soak it all up. Because this feeling you have right now is what it feels like to be proud of yourself. And in life, we make good decisions and we make bad decisions. But like the commercial says, ECPI is the best decision we ever made, right? <laughs> Congratulations, class of 2018. We did it. Good evening.
I'm Mark Dreyfus, uh, president of ECPI University, and I want to welcome you all to our 52nd anniversary commencement. Welcome Congressman Taylor, the class of 2018 graduate and graduate candidates, their families, and distinguished guests. This ceremony marks our 52nd year celebrating the success of our students. We are particularly proud of our graduates and how they impact their communities. For more than 15 years, we have been nationally ranked for the number of graduates from our programs. So for example, we are fifth in the nation in the total number of computer science degrees awarded and number one in Virginia. We are third in the United States in the total number of computer science degrees awarded to African Americans and number one in Virginia. We are sixth in the nation in the total number of computer science degrees awarded to females and number one in Virginia. We are fourth in the nation in the total number of degrees awarded in computer science, engineering, and engineering technologies to African Americans. And we're sixth in the nation in the total number of associate degree graduates in health professions and related clinical sciences. I know most of you are excited to be here and probably not going to remember most of what I have to say, and that's okay. But remember the important people who are here with you today, and don't forget to thank them. These are the really important people in our lives. I also want you to thank your faculty and friends because they are the ones that really supported you through your journey. Also, I'd like to give thanks to our veterans and those serving in the armed forces. You may not know this, but our founder, Alfred Dreyfus, would not be here today if not for the courage of the men who bravely landed on the beaches of Normandy in World War II. His journey for a second chance in America is due to those who served and sacrificed for our freedom. We must never forget to thank those who keep us free. So here you are. So here you are, poised for a new chapter in your life. Your career is in front of you, and you're anxious to pursue your dreams. You'll be making some decisions about your direction, but you've already shown good judgment. Your decision to attend school and finish was a good one. But we make many choices in our lives that are good, and some choices we make that are not so good. But no individual decision that you make will irreparably harm you, but the mistakes you make are, is what makes you who you are. I surely have made my share of mistakes and missed some important opportunities as a result. However, I always try to translate those lessons into a positive outlook. Don't let your mistakes get you down, nor slow you down. Learn from bad decisions and try not to repeat them. Repair the damage that you've made from mistakes quickly, particularly with family or friends, or you may never have that chance again. But it's never a mistake to work a little harder or help a friend or family member. Generally, if an opportunity sounds too good to be true, it usually is. Be careful with your finances and live within your means. Although you may have many strains on your resources, you won't regret trying to save a little each week. What I have learned is that the harder you work and focus, the luckier you get. Create goals and stick to your plan and don't get impatient with where you are or what you are doing. Enjoy the journey. You will get your chance. Never lose your passion nor your dream. There are several tools that you can use that may make your goals nearer and clearer. One, positive attitude. It's everything. Think success and not failure. 
Beware of negative environments. Two, decide upon your dreams and goals. Write them down and pursue them. Three, take action. You know, goals are nothing without action. Don't be afraid to get started. Don't study your goal forever. Four, never stop learning. Always continue learning. Take all the opportunities that your employers give you to learn something new. And be prepared to start at the bottom. Learn whatever you can from those with years of experience and you will eventually get your chance. Be persistent and work hard. You know, success is a marathon, it's not a sprint. And teamwork is key. You'll get to work with people you don't like. Get over it. Treat others with respect. Respect and communicate with people. And focus your time and money. Don't let other things or people distract you. Don't be afraid to innovate or be different because following the herd is a sure way to mediocrity. And be honest and dependable and have integrity. Take responsibility for your actions or all the other things I mentioned aren't worth anything. And lastly, make time for yourself. It's always important to relax and recharge your batteries time and again. So thank you and good luck to you all. I'd like to introduce our speaker tonight, Congressman Scott Taylor. Congressman Taylor's life story is remarkable. You know, Scott was raised on the Delmarva Peninsula in a little hamlet named Hebron in Maryland. Scott began working on a farm at 11 years old and soon after was introduced to Big Brothers and Big Sisters Program of America. His big brother changed Scott's life and helped set Scott on a path to success. An accomplished wrestler in high school, after graduation, Scott wanted to serve his country, so he joined the Navy. He signed up to join one of the most feared fighting forces in the world, the Navy SEALs. After completing the six-month BUDS training course in Coronado, California, Scott was assigned to SEAL Team 4 and served in the United States and Latin America, where he learned a fluency in Spanish. Scott re-enlisted in the Navy after 9-11. In 2005, Scott was sent to Baghdad Ramadi as part of Operation Iraqi Freedom. Scott served as a Navy SEAL sniper. Be careful, okay. <laughs> Scott was severely injured while on combat mission and he was medevaced out of Iraq to Germany and then eventually back to the United States. In 2013, Scott won a hotly contested Republican primary and was in November elected to the House of Delegates representing families in the 85th District, which is principally the Kempsville and Town Center area in Virginia Beach. Scott used his GI Bill education benefits to earn a bachelor's degree in international relations from Harvard University's Extension School and is currently pursuing his master's there in the same field. He holds a master's certificate in government contracting from Old Dominion University. Scott also worships at the Wave Church in Virginia Beach. As a member of the House, Scott has been a successful legislature, legislator on important issues to families. His legislative accomplishments include matters dealing with energy, workforce, and veterans issues. Scott was sworn into the U.S. House of Representatives in Virginia's second district in January of 2017, and he is the first freshman member from Virginia to ever be appointed to the Appropriations Committee for a full term. Please welcome Congressman Scott Taylor. Good evening. Really? Good evening. Much, much better. Sorry for that super long bio. Uh, President Dreyfus, Dr. Olson, distinguished faculty, family, friends, but most importantly, the class of 2018. It's certainly with pride and humility that I have the honor to be here tonight with all of you on this special and spectacular night of achievement. And indeed, this is your night. In fact, why don't you guys stand up? Class 18, stand up. Let's give them a round of applause. Let's give them another round of applause. We're all very proud of you, and you're looking a little tired, so I had to get you up. 
Now, there are a lot more folks out in the audience here, family and friends here that, that are here for you graduates. And you might be on the tip of the spear, but you always need support. And I know that they've been with you. I know that they're proud of you. So why don't we turn and give them a round of applause for all their work and effort and support. All right, y'all can sit now. You know, for over 50 years, as you heard from the president, ECPI has been teaching and training and equipping hard-charging students with skills for challenges of work and for a fulfilling life. And timing is everything. And you all timed it pretty, you, you timed it pretty good. You timed it right. I just read today, today, a headline in the Wall Street Journal, and I quote, brisk hiring pushes jobless rate down to 3.8 as wages rise. So you timed it perfectly. Perfectly, And indeed, look, I speak with businesses all over Virginia and beyond, and they are waiting for you, and they're hungry for your skills and your talent and your motivation. And almost in any field out there right now, there are more jobs than there are folks ready to fill them. So you timed it perfectly. And I will say that throughout history, so many have spoken about so few real recipes for success. So I'll speak to just four tonight that have really been the core of some of my own accomplishments. Number one, always seek out a mentor. Always seek out a mentor. I remember being 11 years old on the farm and a guy drives up in a black car and a black suit and he comes up to me and he says, are you Scott Taylor? And I said, yes, sir. And he said, well, son, you're coming with me. So the farmer runs over to challenge this guy who's talking to an 11 year old kid and he shows him a badge. So the next thing I knew, I was on my way to the police station being charged with malicious destruction of property and breaking and entering. So imagine how proud my mother was that her boy was on his way to probation at 12 years old. So you heard earlier, she signed me up for Big Brothers and Big Sisters. How many of you guys have heard of Big Brothers and Big Sisters? The mentorship program, absolutely. And you know, when a guy walks in the door, I'm thinking he's going to be young and he's going to want to do things that 12-year-olds want to do, but he walks in, he's got a bunch of gray hair, and the only thing I can think about is this guy is old. What are we possibly going to have in common? But I will tell you, over the weeks and the months and the years and to today, initially we started out at the English Grill, English Grill restaurant where I had two, two 22 specials, two eggs, two pancakes, two sausages. And that guy would teach me everything from having a napkin at my lap at the dinner table to stock options. But most importantly, he instilled confidence in me and self-worth in me so that this kid in that small, no stoplight town with bad grades and no money could leave there with the confidence to join the military, to join the Navy, go Navy, all right, and become a U.S. Navy SEAL. Always seek out a mentor. Your mentor, like mine, could be that little voice or action that tells you that you're strong enough, that you're smart enough, that you're capable enough. Next, always put one foot in front of you and keep moving forward. Now, I gotta tell you, when I arrived at SEAL training, it's already over, seems overwhelming, but I was at the ripe old age of 18. So everything seemed overwhelming. I was the youngest guy there. And I remember when we first got there, one of the first days we're sitting in this room, much like you guys are right now, and in walks in Instructor Buchanan. He may as well have been God. I know we're in a church right now, but he may as well have been God at the time. And he walks in, he's got a big old barrel chest, he's got a big dip in his mouth, and he looks at all of us and he says, look at the man to your left, look at the man behind you, in front of you, and to your right. Only one of you will be here at the end of this. And I gotta tell you, and as a little 18 year old guy, I'm looking around, I'm like, man, these guys are smarter, faster, stronger than me. How am I possibly, possibly gonna be able to get through this? But the reality was, of all those tasks, no matter how hot, how cold, how wet, how tired I was, I just put one foot in front of the other and kept moving forward. And I gotta tell you that Instructor Buchanan was right because out of 165 folks that started the class, we only had 20 originals graduate. Always put one foot in front of the other and keep moving forward. Because sometimes it's hard to see. It's hard to see at the end when you have only taken the first step. Many of you remember that, the first step that you took at ACPI. But look where you are. Look where you are. Next one, no task should be too small. You heard the president say that, no task. Now, we got all these Navy stories. I remember getting through SEAL training and I get to my first SEAL team. And I, I walk in the door and I, you know, I'm all pumped up and confident and you know, I'm all in shape and, 
the guy comes in in charge of us and, he, and he's giving us our tasks, our jobs. And he looks at me and he says, Taylor, you've got the toilets. I'm like, the toilets? I don't know, Navy SEAL? Like, what, what's, going, what's going on? So I clean the toilets, of course. Fast forward about a year, I'm on deployment. My war bags are packed, they're numbered, they're ready to go. If we get a, we get a, a mission, I know exactly what bags to grab and be on the plane and be ready to go. So the guy walks in again and he looks and he says, Taylor, you've got the toilets. I'm like, I have got to be the most highly trained combat janitor in the world. <laughs> Somebody's got to clean the toilets. No task is too small. Lead from a, a position, any position. Leadership can be from anywhere. And you got to do it with clarity and chaos. And I got to tell you, this story isn't my own. But perhaps for this room, it's quite fitting. How many of y'all know the story of David and Goliath? The ultimate underdoor, underdog story, right? So imagine an army of Philistines are lined up on the southern hill, and an army of Israelites are lined up on the other hill, on the north, and they're looking down at the great valley of Elah below them, looking at that giant. And he stood there challenging the Israelites to send one man to fight him. No one stepped forward because they were all terrified. A mountain of a man in heavy bronze armor and a helmet, his weapons optimized for close combat, a deadly spear, a sword, a javelin, and all who looked at him just knew that he was unbeatable. And his unlikely challenger, the only one that stood up, was a small, lowly shepherd boy, David. He had no body armor, no sword, no shield, only a staff and a sling. But David ran up to the challenge, picking up five smooth stones on his way to fight. And David slung a stone, striking the giant in the only place where he didn't have armor. And the stone sunk in his forehead, and Goliath fell and was killed by David. So you all know that as the ultimate underdog story, but what if I was to tell you that most people view it and they interpret it in the wrong way? That while Goliath seemed to be unbeatable and to anyone, and he was a huge, the boy was a huge underdog, that actually David would have won every time. He would have won every single time. You see, in ancient times, there were three types of warriors. You had the cavalry, who were the soldiers on horseback or chariots. You had the infantry, who were on foot, soldiers with shields and swords and wearing armor, like Goliath. Lastly, you had the artillery, who were the archers and slingers. You see, Goliath really didn't have a shot against David. The Old Testament tells us that some slingers could sling a stone at a hair and not miss. Slingers could generate the force of a modern handgun. And Goliath was a slow-moving move, behemoth. He may have been unbeatable at close quarters, but he had no shot against a quick-moving, accurate slinger who could hit a target up to 200 yards away. The point here is that everything that the Israelites were scared of, his bronze armor, his weapons, his overwhelming size, David saw him as slow and weak and beatable. And he saw the opportunity where others had lost hope. Now, many of us face Goliath-type challenges in our daily lives. But as leaders, and we can all be leaders, we need to look at each challenge from a different perspective. There is almost always a way, and we must view those challenges like David did, leading from any position with clarity and chaos. Now, you all know that I'm a U.S. congressman, so I, gotta, I can't leave here tonight without saying something about our country right now. And I know that there's much concern and divide in the nation and I believe that we all deserve a seat at the table, Republicans, Democrats, independents, black, white, brown, gay, straight, whatever. We're all Americans. And we face difficult times in our past, and there will be difficult times in our future. But I believe in the resiliency of our nation. I believe that checks and balances realign over time and are lasting. And I believe that ultimately the push and pull of our free ideas, some of the ones that you learned during your course of course work in ECPI, that those free eyes in debate and democracy are what strengthens the very fabric of this country. But most of all, I believe in our people. I believe in you. And I believe that all of you tonight have taken the plunge. You've worked your butts off to get where you are tonight. And you are the type of people that make this country work. You are the fuel and the engine of this country. And we live in an age of fast movement and chaos and change. And we have this obligation to hold fast to the best of the past while being flexible in the now and moving towards the brightest possible future. This country 
was built on indomitable spirit and courage and the determination to have individual freedom, no matter what the cost. So let us never tire, let us never yield, let us spread our energy and spread our charity and spread our patriotism. Our work, our story, and our legacy continue. I'm proud to be here tonight. I'm proud of all of you graduates, and I am certainly proud to be an American. Good luck, God bless you, thank you. Thank you, speakers. And at this time, we'd like to recognize the following students for outstanding student fellowship. When I call your name, please come up on stage. I'd ask that you please hold your applause until all the names have been read. Alex App, Marquette, Marquetta Booker, Gary Fortin, Rory Hendricks, Carl Hobson, Tarl Lee, Kyle Menelef, Silky Maxey, and Tony Walker. Ladies and gentlemen, each year at graduation, we recognize a faculty member who has contributed to the overall well-being and development in and out of class of our students. For example, this could be for assisting students in ways not always associated with day-to-day -day classroom activities. As you can imagine, this was not an easy choice to make with the faculty we have here at the Newport News campus. This year recipient of the John Goodall Award has an interesting history with ECPI. When he was much younger, he wanted to be a rock star. He wanted to become the next Edward Van Halen. He wanted to compose music, tour the world. Then something happened that he has never planned for. He discovered he was pretty good at teaching other people how to play music. This led him to earning a degree in music, and from there he went on to teach guitar and drum lessons to hundreds of students of all ages for more than 21 years. And I can identify with this, after finally getting burned out from teaching students how to play Stairway to Heaven over and over and over, he decided to move into a different field and earned a degree in computer programming and web development from ECPI. This way he could move away from music and into a career in computer technology. But once again, he discovered that he had a talent towards teaching others about computer science. So he earned a master's degree in information technology, became an adjunct instructor for ECPI, been a full-time faculty member, and now he's a CIS program director for the Newport News campus. He, he hears you. He is always eager to help his students learn, takes great joy in seeing his students go from knowing nothing about a subject to getting, a great, to getting great jobs in the field. And most of all, he loves seeing all of you walk across the stage 
and move on to your new future. But let's spend a few minutes looking at what students have to say about this year's John Goodall Award winner. And I chose just a couple of uh, quotes because I didn't want to be here all, all evening talking about uh, this particular instructor. Okay, One of the quotes, he loves what he does and you can tell, and that pretty much describes him. He's very helpful, works to help his students. This is kind of interesting. I never had him as an instructor, but I've heard a lot of good reviews about him. On top of that, he's my academic director, and I come to him for every issue as far as, have, as, far as I have in scheduling my classes. Also, as a faculty member, I believe that Mr. Sullivan is there for his students. Anyone, this, this one's kind of cute, anyone who can make staring at a computer screen for hours fly by is great at their job. <laughs> and one of my favorite quotes, great instructor because he shows us how to do it, then allows us to do it, and helps so we understood if we made any mistakes. Ladies and gentlemen, I present this year's John Goodell Award to Mr. Thomas Sullivan. At this time, we would like to recognize the following students for Outstanding Student Fellowship. When I call your name, please come up on the stage. I would ask that you please hold your applause until all the names have been called. Alicia Burdett. Lauren Edmondson. Katrina Lynch. Maribel Murphy, Whitney Perez, Blair Philpot, Michael Prelowitz, Michelle Robinson, Rosie Simmons, <laughs> Taryn Simmons, Haley Troll, Natasha Wallace, Nicole White, At this time, Dr. Olson and Mrs. Lerar will confer the degrees. All right, now for the good part. That's right, here we go. Here we go, here we go. Let's go. Will the candidates for the Practical Nursing Diploma and Medical Assisting Diploma please rise? Chief Operating Officer Lerar, it is my pleasure as campus president of ECPI University, Newport News Campus, to present to you the candidates for practical nursing and medical assisting. I recommend that you confer the diploma upon them. By the virtue of the authority vested in me by the Board of Trustees of ECPI University and on the recommendation of the faculty, I hereby confer upon you, each of you, the diploma of practical nursing and the diploma of medical assistant in the witness whereof we now award you the diploma. All right, go and have a seat. All right, now, will the candidates for the Associate of Applied Science and Associate of Science degrees please rise? 
Chief Operating Officer Leroy, it is my pleasure as campus president of ECPI University, Newport News Campus, to present to you the candidates for the degrees of Associate of Applied Science and Associate of Science with concentration as listed in the program. I recommend that you now confer the degree upon them. By virtue of authority vested in me by the Board of Trustees of ECPI University and on the recommendation of the faculty, I hereby confer upon you, each of you, the degree of Associate of Applied Science and Associate of Science in witness whereof we now award you the diploma. Will the candidates for the Bachelor of Science degree please arise? <laughs> Bachelor of Science. Chief Operating Officer Lerard, it is my pleasure as campus president of ECPI University, Newport News Campus, to present to you the candidates for the degrees of Bachelors of Science with concentrations as listed in the program. I recommend that you now confer the degree upon them. By virtue of the authority vested in me by the Board of Trustees of ECPI University and on the recommendation of the faculty, I hereby confer upon you, each of you, the degree of Bachelor of Science in witness whereof we now award you the diploma. All right. Now, will the candidates for the Master of Science degrees please arise? Ooh. Hey. Yeah. Chief Operating Officer Lerard, it is my pleasure as campus president of ECPI University, Newport News Campus, to present to you the candidates for the degrees of Masters of Science with concentrations as listed in the program. I recommend that you now confer the degree upon them. By virtue of the authority vested in me by the Board of Trustees of ECPI University and on the recommendation of the faculty, I hereby confer upon you, each of you, the degree of Masters of Science in witness whereof we now award you the diploma. Please be seated and come forward by row as directed. There you go. All right. Now to present the Master of Science in Security Policy and Cyber Operations, Thomas Sullivan, Program Director. Caleb T. Martinez. Mallory A. Poole. Jeremy Rufi. Pichamon Techevijit. Reginald D. Wheeler.
Stephen D. Jones. Amanda S. Albergati. Christine Rufi. to present the Bachelor of Science degrees, Business Administration, and the following concentrations, Accounting, Business Management, Information Technology Management, Mr. Tony Rufi, Campus Director of Academic Affairs. Quinn A. Garner, BSBA Accounting. Alex Alp, magna cum laude, BS Business Management. Marquetta Booker, summa cum laude, Business Management and Accounting. Ardnerl Chapman, BSBA Business Management. Rory Hendricks, butter, no, summa cum laude, BSBA IT management. Joey D. Joyce, business management. Timothy E. Kern, summa cum laude, BSBA Business Management. Luis Medina, BSBA Business Management. Dwayne L. Menefee, BSBA Business Management. To present, now to present the Associate of Science, Computer and Information Science in the following concentrations, Cyber and Network Security and Web Development, and the Bachelor of Science, Computer and Information Science in the following concentration, Cloud Computing, Cyber and Network Security, Software Development and Web Development, Mr. Thomas Sullivan, Program Director. Shanika B. Batista, summa cum laude. Charles Bolton. Brian P. Ellis. Christian Lee Amir Estrada.
Christopher H. Hill. Kendra M. Howard. Martin Tapala. Michael J. Thompson. Xavius M. Ward. Anthony B. Ferris. Mikaish Felton Leon. Matthew L. Goodwin. Bruce L. Hernandez. Anas Ismail. Donovan J. Kelly, summa cum laude. Samuel Lawrence. William McLean, summa cum laude. Silka Maxi, summa cum laude. Ricardo E. Miranda. Larry B. Petway Jr. Robert M. Randolph. Keith V. Underwood. Hey, Liam. Liam J. Walsh, magna cum laude. Robert T. Cornell, magna cum laude. Candice R. Fry. Derek D. Johnson. Kyle, Kyle T. Manilef, magna cum laude. Zachary T. Quinn. David L. Upton. Now, to present the Bachelor of Science, Criminal Justice in the following concentrations, Criminal Justice and Homeland Security, Mr. William Jerry Robbins, Program Director. Ty 
Jarrell Durant, criminal justice. Danielle S. Harrelson. Taylor I. Robinson, cum laude. <laughs> Jasmine Aquino Peguero, cum laude. Are. Christopher D. Subert. Tony E. Walker, cum laude. And now to present the Associate of Science in Electronics Engineering Technology and the Bachelor of Science Electronics Engineering Technology in the following concentrations. Electronics Engineering Technology and Mechatronics, Mr. William White, Evening School Manager. So John Dias. Chantel Moore. Everett Harris. Tara Lee. Thomas Adams. Gary Ford, cum laude. Carl Hobson. Stephen Lawrence. And now to present the Bachelor of Science in Healthcare Administration, Cindy Richard Miles, Program Director.
Sherryon McRae. Marsha McHugh Brown. Shakia Paulin. Javon Peterson. Olimus Robinson the third. Ashley Sandal, magna cum laude. <laughs> Tiffany Simmons, cum laude. <laughs> Patsy Simpson. <laughs> Rachel Spivey. London Thomas. Tia Wise Jones. Stephanie Willis. Now to present the Bachelor of Science in nursing, Dr. Crystal Lane Tillerson, Program Director. It is my pleasure to present Danielle Rupi. Now to present the Associate of Applied Science in Dental Assisting, Vicki Brett, Program Director. <laughs> Melody Dudley. Carrie Givens, summa cum laude. Erica Gottlich, summa cum laude. Eliza Fisher. Allison Forget. Erica Mars. Sarah Margaret. Candida Nagy, magna cum laude. Whitney Perez, cum laude. Now to present the Associates of Applied Science in Diagnostic Medical Sonography is Dr. Karen Schubert. Program Director. Brittany Spivey. I'm sorry. Rebecca Northrup. the Associate of Applied Science in Emergency Medical Services, Nicholas Clemenko, 
Program Director. Before we call the name of the first graduate, I'd like to point out the fact that this is the very first graduating class for in the Associates Applied Science degree in Emergency Medical Services for ECPI University. <laughs> Katrina Lynch. Cameron Bunston. Holly Doust. Maria Goodwin. Brittany Kerskoris. <laughs> Zachary Wazaris. Rachel Carey Powers, magnum cum laude. <laughs> Kayla Scout. <laughs> Donald Stackhouse. present the Associate of Applied Science and Health Information Management, Paula Sellers, Program Director. Michelle Robinson, magna cum laude. Rosie Simmons, magna cum laude. Akeem Cunningham. <laughs> Brittany White. <laughs> now to present the Associate of Applied Science in Massage Therapy, Michelle Rose, Program Director. Alexis Bailey. <laughs> Jennifer Benjamin. Elizabeth Marie Butler. Jasmine Elliott. Angela Fox. Laura Hill. Rachel Lynn Hines, cum laude. Maribel Murphy. Derek Dante Scott. Job, 
and now to present the Associate of Applied Science and Medical Assisting, Gwendolyn Chambers, Program Director. Carrie Brown, Magnum Cum Laude. Sierra Butler, Associate Medical Assistant. Brianna Clay, Medical Assistant. Charity Cloudy, Associate Medical Assistant. Tashika Davis, medical assistant. Miranda Dillon. Rachel Hendricks. Jerome Joyner. Taikisha Keys. Taryn Elizabeth Simmons. Magnum Cum Laude. Tajay Leary. Morgan Marquez. Summa Cum Laude. Chrisette Placencia. Angelique Ramirez. Annalise Ramos. Maria Ridley. Kristen Smith, Associates of Medical Assisting. Jasmine Smith Aaron, Magnum Cum Laude. Christopher Wood. Rachel Owens, summa cum laude. Kelsey Zalaric. And now to present the Associates of Applied Science and Medical Radiography Daniel Gardner, Program Director. Brianna DeLoach, Magnum Cum Laude.
Lauren Edmondson, summa cum laude. Mary J. Disler. Thomas Gomez. Chelsea Houchins, magna cum laude. Brittany Lane. Isaac Powat, cum laude. Stephanie Rodriguez, magna cum laude. Tim Swicegood. Now to present the Associate of Applied Science and Physical Therapist Assistant, Dr. Candy Mills, Program Director. Dominique Askew. Allison Baines, summa cum laude. Raven Claiborne. Congratulations. Christian Darnell. Rich Furco, cum laude. Daniel Isaac, cum laude. Eric Newt. Sorry. <laughs> Thomas Mercury. Stephen Miller. Cum laude. David Newman, summa cum laude. Jessica Peckman, cum laude. Angela Pepper, cum laude. Abigail Presson, magnum cum laude. Mike Prelowitz, summa cum laude. Allison Ringo, cum laude. Dagny Roper, cum laude. Autumn Savin, magnum cum laude. Brianna Stanifer. Amanda Stewart. Tracy Scholl. Kyle Thompson.
now to present the Associate of Applied Science in Registered Nursing, Mrs. Kendall Bailey, Program Director. Siobhan Alexander. Tiffany Anderson. Chantal Anduhar. Candace Sample Barnwell. Danielle Blairman. Brittany Brandon Capehart. Shelby Bristol. Shantae Butler. <laughs> Stephanie Sinfio. <laughs> Kimberly Davis. Zuri D'Souza. Gregnita Franks. Tanika Grayson. Marcelina Green. Krista Hahn. Alicia Burdett, magna cum laude. Jennifer Hickman. <laughs> Jessica Jones. <laughs> Alina Mead. Isaacs. Lakeisha Moore. Darina Perkins, summa cum laude. Emily Ratliff. <laughs> Kiata Robinson. <laughs> Brittany Smith. Stacy Smith. <laughs> Mackenzie Stamler. Sarah 
Tuttle. <laughs> Tiffany Tyson. Chanel Williams. Tanisha Winston. Lauren Wright. Now to present the Diploma in Medical Assisting, Gwendolyn Chambers, Program Director. Amanda Hanbury. Jade Alexandria Renee Pettis. LaQuinta Allen. Distinction. Now to present the Diploma in Practical Nursing Jennifer Martinez, Program Director. Imani Alls. Jesse Anderson. Crystal Autry. Linda Fat. Chiffon Bean. Ramona Beekman. Ashley Britt. Monique Buchanan. Maribel Kane. Brittany Colquitt Robinson. Natisha Fennell. Shanae Fowler. Monica Francis. Karima Gabriel. Teresa Hamilton. Dante Horbach. Jaton Jenkins. Lauren Mason. Kayla McKinley. Kiana Medina. Olive Nelson.
Joanna Parsons. Blair Philpot. Fatima Poblet. Marlene Porter. Crystal Ritchie. Sasha Roberts. Mercedes Robinson. Kayla Smith. Tayana Smith. Denise St. Jean. Brittany Stallings. Damon Thomas. Asia Ward. Elizabeth Wells. Chalicia Williams. Shelby Williams. Now to present the graduating class of 2017-2018, Chief Operating Officer, Barbara Larar. You are now at a crossroads of a significant milestone in your lives. Will the graduates of 2017-2018 please rise? Yeah. Woo! Graduates, please move your tassels from the right side to the left side. This gesture signifies your passage from college into the world of industry. Graduates, please turn and face the audience. Parents, family, friends, I now present to you ECPI University graduating class of 2017-2018. Graduates, please be seated. Sherry Toman will now present the benediction. As our ceremony comes to a close, we ask for all our graduates to be blessed throughout their life from this day forward with endless opportunities and success. We ask that each graduate stay true to their dreams, use their gifts wisely, and walk into the future with confidence, determination, and a dedication to their new path. To quote from one of my favorite songs, Avril Lavigne, it is your time to fly. It is your time to shine. There is a light inside of all of us. Soon, you'll find that it's your time to fly. Class of 2018, now is your time to fly.